All right, we'd like to welcome uh, defending champion Luke List into the interview room here at the 2023 Farmers Insurance Open. Uh, Luke, a defending champion on tour for the first time. Uh, what memories came to mind walking around Torrey Pines for the first time this week, first time this week since the win, and uh, how does it feel to be back? Feels fantastic to be back and representing, you know, Farmers and Insurance for the defending champ this year. So um, I was just telling Mark on the way over, I love this golf course and the, you know, just being back with those special memories from last year. Um, obviously all good ones, so it was fun to kind of relive, played nine holes on the south course yesterday, and then um, Pro-Am on the south course again, the front nine today, so um, kind of relived a little bit yesterday, and today was more just getting ready for, for tomorrow. You had your uh, best finish um, since the win a couple weeks ago at the Century Tournament of Champions. Uh, How does the game feel coming into this week? Yeah, I struggled for a little bit at the end of last fall, and then um, Felt like I put in some significant work over the holidays, and even the short amount of time we had, and then was able to, um, you know, make some gains in where I thought was some needed areas, and then um, still have some work to do in some ball striking areas, which usually is one of my strengths. So I think that'll all come together, and hopefully do it again this week. All right, we'll take some questions out here. If you have a question, we'll get a microphone to you. We'll start with, with Kevin on the aisle. Luke, um, when you kind of think back, obviously the 72nd hole in the playoff was so, you know, the memorable. But were there any other moments throughout the week looking back that you feel like were kind of fork in the road moments that propelled you to get you in that spot come the final round, final couple holes? Yeah, I remember, you know, I didn't drive it that well the first couple of days. And then that kind of continued actually throughout the week. So um, just to have that, usually if I'm driving it well, that kind of blends into the rest of the game a little bit. And um for me to not feel like I was hitting as many fairways and to sustain that and mentally and kind of forego some demons in that area was really cool to kind of just have the, you know, the idea that I was going to be okay and still be able to score, um, not driving at my best. So I um, like to bottle that up every week, but um, unfortunately that's tough to do. The Is there any element of before the win feeling like your resume professional-wise was kind of incomplete? before you won? Oh, there's no question about that and still feel like so. I mean, the win's obviously validating, but, um, you know, I'm not getting any younger and the golfers seem to be getting younger across the board. So um, I'd like to check off a few more before I'm done. And I know um, kind of when you first came out on the Corn Ferry Tour, you were known as kind of one of the longer hitters up at the top. And now a lot of guys are kind of yeah. catching off. What's is Has that trend kind of surprised you? Or when you were thinking back to when you were younger, were you expecting guys to come catch up to you? And how did I guess. Along yeah, I mean, the evolution of professional golf has changed in the sense that coaching and, and technology have obviously gotten substantially different, you know, in, in my career. So, you know, where we were just taught to hit as hard as you can without much technique growing up, now they're taught how to do it the right way with fitness and training and coaching. And um, the technique of all these young guys is pretty incredible at such a young age. And that's why you see guys coming off the corn ferry, even coming out of college ready to win out here at such a young age. And I know when you won, it was pretty emotional for you. What, could you speak to what you think it was looking back, that why that emotion kind of came out so much in yeah, that moment? Yeah, for, for dreaming about something like that for so long and then going through, you know, 30-something years, 30 years of uh, playing golf um, to work hard and have ups and downs and then to, to have that as, um, you know, like I said, validation with my family there made it um, extra special. So that was obviously why the emotions were running high. Got one in the back there. Hi, Luke. Um, Hi. You received one of the most functional trophies in all of professional sports. Rewind back when you were receiving that trophy surfboard. What was going through your mind? Yeah, it's pretty iconic um, to have that um, displayed. And, you know, I've got it in a cool spot in my um, my pool house back in Georgia. Unfortunately, I haven't used it, but um, it's brought back some smiles every time I have people over and kind of laugh and joke about that. Um, to this day, so it's a it's a really cool, um, and I've got place for another one, so it's gonna be, be nice. If given the opportunity, do you think someday you'll take it out and take it for a surf? Yeah, I wouldn't mind if somebody did that, um, but for, I'd be tough in Georgia, so you have to travel a little bit with it. So if somebody's got room for it, they're welcome to take it on the road. You're a pretty tall guy. You're six two, and this is one of the tallest professional sports trophies out there. Having one of those, not many people have them. Oh. I'm saying that you have one. What does that mean to you? 
Yeah, um, that's I didn't know that stat, and but come to think of it now, obviously that makes sense. That, um, that. so it's it's um, you know this tournament will always you know hold a precious spot in my heart, especially first win with my family, like I said. So um, to have a unique trophy like that uh, makes it extra special. And the fact that you can take it out and use it. That's right. I was that's looking right. at the picture of you and your family with yeah. the surfboard. That bring back any memories? Yeah, of course. You know, I've got. Um, a lot of footage that people sent friends and family and a lot, it was emotional for a lot of people that have been you know influential in my life so um, to relive that this week is is extra special no matter how how I play but um, obviously want to try to defend and, and get back in contention on on Saturday and the fact that they used a local surf shop and a local surf shaper to make your custom board what does that say about San Diego and surfing yeah I mean this whole area is pretty iconic obviously and um, you know, North County, San Diego, and then all the way up through. I spent some time up in, you know, Orange County and in LA County and Long Beach and Seal Beach. And I, I've always loved this whole area. This whole coastline is pretty fantastic. And um, you guys are all who live for locals are lucky to live here. It's it's one of the most beautiful places on the planet. Thank you. Todd, on the left. Luke, I wanted to ask, um, when you won here and then you're back out on tour, um, did you feel differently as, as then a tour winner? Was there any sense of that on yeah. a week-to-week -week basis? And was there any pressure with it? I mean, not that everyone's best friends out here by any means, but the camaraderie is pretty tight. And for someone like myself to come out and win after a long period of time, there was a lot of congratulatory messages and, and just good job and stuff like that. So that's... You know, that's special to have your peers appreciate what you've gone through, especially some of the guys that, you know, have gone a long time also without winning. Um, comes easier, you know, for others, John Rahm. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's it's hard to win out here. So that in itself was nice to have the peers, you know, complimentary of, of the, you know, the achievement. Yeah, just in, internally, though, how did it? Yeah, I mean, it, unfortunately, I didn't really carry that in momentum-wise. I think I played okay for a little bit, um, you know, throughout some of the tournaments and then, just got in some bad habits swing-wise and didn't didn't perform as well as I'd liked, especially in some of the majors. Um, but that's golf, right? So, um, you know, it's been up and down most of my career. But hopefully, you know, I've, like I said, I've kind of been working at it a little harder, and hopefully I'm kind of back on that upswing. Was there one or two congratulations that meant more than anyone else as far as who you heard from? Oh, man, that's a tough one. Um, I didn't get a lot of sleep that night. I was going to trying to respond to as many texts and calls yeah. as I could. And, um, you know, I know my, my grandfather is still around, so he got he taught me how to play golf. So having him get to see that was really special and his, his message and getting to talk to him. Um, you know, he's a tough, kind of tough old, old guy. So to have him, you know, pretty emotional was special to me too. Yeah. I want to ask you about um, winning on a Saturday and, and just – Going into the week last week, no, you know, you guys don't play on Saturdays ever really. Um, what was the mentality kind of going into the week as far as your prep? Right. And then um, was it different? Was it a, a different week because of that well, any, Saturday? I think any time you win, even the great players that win, a lot of things have to go your way. Um, you know, you can't force it. But I think that for me – the mentality on Saturday was I was behind, so I needed a good round, obviously. And I wasn't really thinking about winning as much as like, okay, at this level, you know, on on Saturday or sun, mostly Sundays, it's it's kind of pedal to the metal and not really feeling like you're giving up opportunities and really trying to be aggressive. So that was my mindset going into the, <clears throat> into the day, uh, just be as aggressive as possible. And then to dodge some bullets, obviously, I think John had a putt maybe Justin Rose, Jason Day, um, and then uh, Will Zalatoris, obviously, the putt to, to, to win outright. Um, again, a lot of great players could have easily gone the other way. It has in my career another couple times. So, um, But I knew once I got in the playoff, I was my job was to make birdie, and I was able to do that. Yeah. And just the oddity of the week, too, of it being a Saturday finish. And yeah, I mean, this. To it, I, luckily, I've been around this course a lot, a lot before and had some success. So... The, the short preparation wasn't a big deal to me. I feel like I know this golf course, and it's a, it's a matter of executing golf shots. And, you know, it's a little tougher for some of the rookies to come off Palm Springs and learn both courses in two days. But that's part of the, the tour we're on. And, um, you know, fortunately, I feel like I've got an advantage just knowing the golf course a little bit better. What did that Sunday look like for you? So you finish on Saturday. You went yeah. on Saturday. What was 
It was what just to wake up early with the kids, fly back to Georgia, um, you know, pretty tired with, with not a lot of sleep. And I think we were in, you know, 29 F or something like in the back, middle of the plane. And there was a few, you know, people that recognized, you know, an accomplishment and uh, that was nice. And uh, we, we had a fun rest of the week. My wife threw a like little surprise party with some friends and family. That was really nice. And uh, just got to celebrate a little bit that night. Does farmers ship the surfboard? Oh, yeah. So it's sitting in, uh, they, we got it pretty quick, and then it's sitting in my pool house, kind of where I've got a pool table and, and a TV, and it's just a nice spot to to uh, put it on display. In the front here. Uh, what did you say about uh, your grandfather? He taught you uh, golf, and uh, uh, where was that? And uh, uh, what did he have to say after you won, or did uh, is he still with us? He still is, yeah. He um, he was a very good golfer himself, scratch player, and then he um, I would go out after school with him, kind of seven, eight years old, started playing, and I couldn't ride in the golf cart until I hit it far enough, so he made me run after it and then got to the level where, uh, you know, I was using old old women's clubs and, and cut down, you know, shafts and then tennis shoes, and he was just old school with his, his uh, approach. Where was that? In Jasper, Georgia. I see. Yeah. And uh, what did he have to say after you won? Yeah, he was obviously proud. Um, he's not a man of too much emotional uh, language, but he was he was definitely proud, and um, I give him a lot of credit for helping me raise the right way and and um, to also pursue other sports too, be, be athletic, and I think that's a component that was able to help me over the years, you know, draw back on some different athletic experiences. Any other questions for Luke? We got one from Kevin. And then um, I saw the little offbeat, but you, your parents were swimmers, but you didn't yeah. enjoy swimming as much growing up. I don't know who, how you can enjoy it. Um, but yeah, they were, they were excellent athletes. My sisters as well swam all throughout college. And um, yeah, I, I swam for one year in high school just because they needed some guys to kind of fill up the, the roster, I think. So um, we, the lane one, they called it, was kind of the, the scrubs of the, the swim team. And I was definitely in that lane. So it was fun to, to spend some time with my sisters and um, try to be competitive and stay in good shape that way. But I did not enjoy practice at all. So luckily, the, the swim coach was a golfer and let me come in when I wanted. So, uh, But yeah, I commendable to any athlete that has to swim twice a day and do you know exercises on land. And it's, it's a wild sport. So Fitting, though, to get your first one right by the water. Yeah, yeah. I don't like my chances out there, but uh, better on land. But um, yeah, it's it's obviously this is one of the most iconic. Um, this and next week are probably the most iconic on tour that we play uh, from a, from a view standpoint. All right, those are all the questions we have. We appreciate your time, Luke, and best of luck this week. Thank you, guys.